this one really could be the deciding factor. Um, Furia Black Dragons, a map like Clubhouse as well, could be a very, very equal split. I'm excited to see it. You did correctly assess as well uh, the Black Dragons only played this map in the Copa do Brazil. And funny enough, one of the teams against whom they played it and beat was Supernova, which is where they fielded one of, or not fielded, it's where they scouted one of their new players. So <laughs> they basically beat them and then they were like, we're going to have one of your players, which was Perez. So, um, you know, it's it's hard to assess the way they the go the way that they are going to play and i think it was furia who the only brazilian team that they beat in here is mibr um so there isn't really much of a track record for the way that these two teams like to play especially against the brazilian play style so this is a bit of un unprecedented territory you know so it's a, it's a new a new quantity um and i'm excited to see how that's going to be so we're going to be starting off on gym and bedroom which is again we've seen a couple of sites today that have been used as primary sites that would not necessarily be primary to many this is a perfect example of one of them yeah the gym and bedroom site it's not a not a terrible site and you know clubhouse now as long as the team's not going to bar and stock I think it's is very sort of subjective as to as to what actually is the primary site because typically as a defender you're going to be looking to get wins in all three. So it could do something initially to, to potentially throw Furia off, but they're well equipped here. They've got the Flores, they've got two hard breaches, they've got a little bit of burn utility and some soft destruction. I doubt we see this lineup changing all too much throughout the course of this game. I guess we'll have to see how that's going to go. So, Toxie playing on the Kaid it's going to be an interesting one because, of course, uh, to break into this site, you typically need to breach both sides of the building over on the server wall to the east and the jacuzzi wall to the west. And playing with the Electro Claws could make that more difficult. Now, I don't know if they're going to use both of them on each of those walls or if they're just going to save one in pocket try and go for a trick over on the jacuzzi wall for example i guess we'll have to find out how that's going to be played but with a maverick in play stuff like that isn't so much an issue miracle can get going here on the server wall it hasn't been electrified so i assume that the electricals are in fact going to be reserved for a little later on Fancy already we're going to use in the Flores there to assist him getting that wall open. It's something we've seen a couple of teams doing now, and it just frees up the Zephyr. Typically, you would Maverick open the wall, destroy the reinforcement, and then wait for the Zephyr to use the lifeline as a safe means of getting that wall open. Obviously, breach and charge could be, you know, shot out, or you could be shot as you're looking to place it, whereas if you do it from afar, it gives you a little bit more safety. Now, the Flora is being used for that, really frees the Zephyr up. And at the same time, Fury are also able to get this Jacuzzi wall open. So they've achieved two of the ticks in the box that you would expect before the halfway point of the round. And fancy, well, he takes down Perez. Just getting a little even bit left too aggressive. Spawn, mate. <laughs> yeah, all the way back. Well, live, he's the player over here in logistics. And I always like it when you see the attackers actually putting pressure on the logistics hatch. And it looks like Furia may be about to send down a drone to scout out Live's position. That's going to be pressured and force him to make rotates, which now that there is presence on the window and the breach have been made, it's harder to make the rotates across the lines of sight being held. Heise is the next one to get a kill onto Patoxy. And with Iron has been DBNO'd as well, Suddenly, there's just two players, one player <laughs> remaining of Black Dragons, and it is live playing from logistics. Last player alive and with a lot of work to do here. He's able to find himself a kill over onto Miracle as well, and his crosshair placement was good there. But Rare had the pre-fire, had that little bit more HP, had the heads up, and was able to shut him down. Furia there with a... Pretty clinical approach into gym and bedroom. Not looking phased at all by the site choice and happy to just jump straight on into this one. 
You know, I think one of the things as well is that Black Dragons did not have very heavy East presence at all. They had one player over there, which uh, Fantasy managed to get rid of very quickly from spawn. What a lot of teams like to do is have two, maybe even three defenders kind of floating around in the East to the middle of the map to make it much harder to take control of that side. And of course, once you have control as the attackers of the East side, then you can, sp you can put yourself on the windows very easily easily and it was that window placement outside of master particularly that picked off a number of the defenders of black dragons who were over on the site itself so it just kind of shows that domino effect how an area of the map that is entirely unrelated to the site can still have such implications for the way that the defenders have to play and maybe even die over on the actual site so if Black Dragons do decide to go back to uh, gym and bedroom a little bit later on, I would like to see some heavier presence extended beyond the site itself over towards the east. Well, for the meantime, Black Dragons aren't going to be going back to gym and bedroom. Instead, they're going to be going downstairs to the basement. Trying to pick up around here. They've got a... Quite a substantial hold upstairs as well. They've invested not just reinforcements, but mute jammers as well. They're not right. They're not quite going for the the mute mozzie combination of a roam game, but they're getting kind of close. They have the mute. They have the, the vigil, and instead of the mozzie, it is going to be the Aruni. So it's a lot really for Furia to clear on out here. Perez taking a bit of initiative. Managing to find the nice opening kill there over onto Miracle this time as Miracle was looking to Maverick open in and gain a bit of access into CCTV. It's a big loss, losing the Maverick at this point and your only other hard breach is going to be the Thermite. is going to limit Furia. Yeah, very much so. I mean, when you're thinking of wanting to go down onto the basement, there is really so much that you have to get open. Already the exothermic charge is... Not quite being denied. They can get open jacuzzi, but I worry about the hatch. I mean, how many hatches did, did Maverick actually get open? I mean, Maverick didn't get any hatches. He was still trying to get the east wall open. Well, there you go. So, <laughs> good luck going downstairs because you pretty much have two options. What? Well, I was going to say three, but actually I'd imagine the dirt tunnels also be reinforced. So you pretty much have two options. And that is main stairs and blue. Both of those are going to be watched very intently by the defenders. Well, now we're seeing a bit of vertical pressure come in, but players from Black Dragon still being allowed to make that rotation through into Oil Pit. Ion with the C4 primed and ready. Going to toss it out to the bottom main stairs. It will get shot out in place. It's going to be Lender. Pick up the kill over onto live. Perez has found himself down for the count as well. Resets are going to be inside of Arsenal. Not really feeling too much pressure at the minute. The smoke Caniston going to cut off there and allow players from Furia to flood in to that memorial side. It's causing a lot of confusion on the side of Black Dragons and they're unsure of the angles in which to hold. Ion, he's got the heads up and he's going to take down Lender. Keeping himself concealed in that smoke. Kitchen hatch remaining fully reinforced is a blessing at the moment for Black Dragons. as They're able to pick off the area as they push through these single doorways. Rare will be able to get the trade back over onto Ion and now attempt to get the plan down. Now, Kai's, he's inside a dirt tunnel. He wasn't really providing too much assistance. The plant will be successful. Rare, he has to try and hold this off. He picks up a triple kill. He finds the frag onto resets. He's still alive now, and he's got information. The yellow ping was there, but it wasn't enough. He couldn't land his shots for Toxie. Very cautiously approaching that, conscious of a potential claymore, but it won't be. Instead, he's just got plenty of time to disable that diffuser. Black Dragons, they're going to pick up round two. I mean, I'll be honest. It is huge that Furia got that far with the attack given the limitations that have been put on them by the Maverick being picked off so early. However, it also meant that they were supremely limited in their options. Once they got the plant down, where in the basement they could actually take. So it doesn't really surprise me the Black Dragons could bring that back in their favor. It was very close. You know, those, those fights could have gone either way and maybe Furia would have been able to take that. But ultimately, the whole thing was just... Uh, 
Well, we've been handed a terrible card. Let's just try and work with it as best we can. I was impressed that they could get, um, you know, the... What do you call it? Even like church corridor? Moto corridor? The short corridor just off of main stairs and moto as well as they could. And the fact that they shot out the C4 really helped with that. It still puts them in a situation where while you've made it past the first choke point of main stairs, you've still got to get through the next choke point of moto door. And everyone knows that you're in church and it's just difficult. You can't have the same kind of two-pronged approach, multi-dimensional that you would look for had your hard breaches remained alive throughout the, the first half of the round. It was a bit of a shame that Highs found himself inside of that dirt tunnel as well because he just wasn't able to have that same level of impact, but a big round from Rare. And one of the reasons why I tout him as one of the best supports is that he is capable, but still it was a bit of a bridge too far for him. And We've seen Black Dragons come away with a successful round there. Now they're going to move things up again. Taking us into that cash and CCTV site. Now this is where we expect to see the Flores drones used a little bit more as well. As you're going to be looking to remove players and utility from power position. So a bit of focus now on where they're going to get played. Arcade has been brought by resets and he's actually playing it from inside of Garage. With a mute jammer as well. It's a pretty big investment there. Yep. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's a big investment. Furious so far haven't lost their hard breaches, which is a good start. Just trying to hold on these really narrow angles in through that Maverick hole that's been made. But of course, Buck can come along and actually finish off the Maverick trick. Fantasy, the first one to fall, in fact. I didn't catch how many of his drones he had remaining, but we know that he at least got to use one or two before he went down still. Big fragger for the team and not someone you want to be losing early. Miracle 2. Not a great start to this round for Furia. No, Furia are really getting picked off here. And now Black Dragons can make that rotation back to site, knowing that they've done quite a good job there. Lender's still going to be below, trying to search out for those players. Rare going to start gathering a little bit of intel on the drone as well. You kind of worry about this push because it's kind of pivoted to be a construction sided push, but you've lost a couple of really key players in that. In the Flores and in the Maverick, the drones and the nades that those two bring are going to be relied upon quite heavily to start to make this entrance. Rare going to already have to be fighting and vying for that construction control as the wall has in fact been left soft here as a deliberate choice by Black Dragons and that's going to make things increasingly more difficult garage hasn't been dealt with at all leaving resets to be able to play there pretty much for free ion he's got a couple of angles to concern himself with here i don't think he's seen the player prone and getting chunked down slowly but surely rare eventually lands the finishing blow the toxic babe canisters coming out now to deny this push live being able to take alinda perez what a shot onto highs it's all down to rare again this time one versus two, no help to speak of. That is a desperate attempt at an exothermic, if ever I have seen one. There's eight seconds left there. He's going to smoke off and try and push on through. But you do just get the feeling he's going to get shut down very quickly indeed. If the time doesn't step in first, which in this case it will. Black Dragon's not giving them the opportunity there. We're going to take a second round here. Very unfortunate there for Furia. That was really uncharacteristically slow for them. But I think Fantasy being picked off early didn't help with that. Also, the fact that Black Dragons had a very extended hold on their defense. You know, we saw a couple of their players all the way over towards gym, towards main stairs. And that meant that this kind of uh, push that Furia were looking to make in through the other side of the map was stunted. We talk a lot about how when you're attacking onto CCTV and cash, typically you're either going to see an Eastern garage push or you're going to see an Eastern construction push. And it's become a bit more popular of late to actually go for construction again. Usually if you're going to be coming in through Jacuzzi, that's what that signifies. And so an entire half of the attempt from Furia was completely shut down because Black Dragons committed to their extended defense. 
Back into gym and bedroom we go. This was a site that Furia were very successful in previously. They were able to really take the advantage and get a couple of kills early, which gave them that advantage. They were also able to get both the east wall open into CCTV and the jacuzzi wall open pretty much for free nice and early. So expect to see those things happening again. Black Dragons have proved that they are switched on and ready to take any opportunity that they may get here. Patoxy going to be bringing the Goyo this time. Mirror in play as well. A few things that could be fairly tricky to deal with. In fact, there's a mirror window being placed on that jacuzzi wall. That always makes Maverickin a lot more tricky. I love it. It's fun. All right, well, let's see if they can actually get in. Furia being able to take control the east side of the map really quickly was a huge downfall for Black Dragons back in round number one. Now, I can't see... Okay, there are a couple of players who are over on this side. You can see through the wall. Perfect timing, because I was going to say I couldn't see any of the silhouettes, but we know that they're here now. Fantasy getting the long-range kill last time <laughs> really helped make that uh, defense from Black Dragons flop. But so far, they don't look to be set to moving too fast. You also have Patoxy in construction, who's ready to support as well. Now, already, you can see this slowness. I mean, very suddenly come in for Furia. You need to take the time to drone, but that drone's shot straight out. So now what happens? Resets is ready with a C4. The second you walk in to CCTV... There's a chance you could get blown to smithereens. Very good chance as well as we have seen the C4s be quite effective so far tonight. Not as much early advantage has been gained this time by Furia. Still firmly in that fact-finding stage of the round, trying to single out that attacker, single out that defender and... Give themselves that little foothold on in. They've got good control of the cash side of things in, into CCTV as well. So the push is going to start to materialize from there. But you do get the impression that that mirror window has really slowed down their progress here. I think that mm. Jacuzzi is going to start getting open now. As we did see the exothermic placed on through. The denial removed. But the mirror window has popped and the X has been destroyed. Still... One available there from Rare as he looks to... I think he may have picked the first one up, in fact, and has now instead gone to replace. Nade's now going to come out from Lender as the Jacuzzi wall has been opened. But still, we're waiting for that initial push. We're still waiting for that opening kill, and there's 15 seconds left to go. Lender, he finds himself down, but Miracle picks up the first two frags as he's able to get a good line of sight in from that jacuzzi wall. Make it three as he bakes off Perez as he rotates up those main stairs. Still, players on the side of Furia are falling and Rez getting the diffuser down in and amongst a lot of pressure. Miracle, he wasn't content with three kills. He wanted four. It turns out one of them was his teammate, though. The final two frags coming on in. And Furia, it was a slow execute, but they managed to salvage the round. It's right, we go again. Furia were really slowed down in that round, and I did worry for them, you know, especially when it came to the point that they had to come in through Jacuzzi, open things up onto the mirror windows that had been deliberately placed by Black Dragons to cause a disruption to them. But eventually, they got Jacuzzi open, managed to come in, and Miracle's wonderful 3k through the originally just a line of sight was fantastic there. Um, and I do wonder maybe Black Dragons could have been bit more passive allowed fury to come in and then collapsed in on them maybe that would have seen some more success i guess we don't know they'll be going down to the basement though now remember of course fury got the, really the short end of the stick uh back in round number two when black dragons first decided to defend here because they had their maverick taken off the board immediately now this time they've opted to bring three hard breaches i think that's probably a, a just in case kind of scenario because should miracle be removed off the board there's still enough hard breach to actually get into the basement
All right, let's see if they're going to be able to actually do it. I mean, so far, everyone's alive. Back into round number five now. We, For anyone that's joined us, we do apologize. We have lowered the game volume. Um, we do have a mute bug at the moment, so we're going to work on a resolution for that, but... It, uh, it isn't on your end. We have lowered the volume of the game just so that it isn't as obvious and it's not as annoying. We'll pump it back up when we uh, when we get it back. But for the meantime, we are inside of round number five. Still all things level between these two teams. We're going to be attacking downstairs yet again. It was a Round that came down to a one versus one when we previously saw it. Red did manage to get that diffuser down and got himself into the 1v1. But a lot of damage had been done in the early part of the round. I think particularly losing players on the Rome clear. Fury really struggled to get a handle. Losing that Maverick as well. Miracle died to a run out. So I'm sure they're going to be a little bit more cautious this time. Get those hatches open and to progress a little bit further before getting caught out. Well, so far, everybody's alive, so... That's good. That's always something. Miracle's actually got himself into the building. Fury would like to go in for this top, like, you not get actually through the rotate. They'd like to go for this top four clear. They should be able to get the hatches open, I would imagine, although... I mean... Highs wasn't going to be in charge of getting hatches, but these are still nice kills coming in from Patoxy, who hasn't been shifted off the garage rafters and could come to be a bit of a problem if he's just left alone. Really could, as not a player that you can really afford to ignore. And again, we see Furia losing a couple of bodies before they've been able to really get a lot of those important tasks done. Rare is able to trade back as... He just is in one of those moods and in one of those games where he's doing as much as he possibly can. Not only playing that supporting role, but also currently top frag by double, it is worth mentioning, on the side of Furia. Let's see how he goes inside of this round. And Nade going to come through there into Memorial. Church wall will be opened here. It's going to give... Bit more access in toward that church area. Ion, he's taken down there as Miracle sees a little bit of success. Lender from the backside as well. He's pushed in down through blue and is in fact going to find the final two. Rare was already getting the plant down there. Big kills from Lender. What a great rotation to make at such an important time. We so often talk about that importance of blue pressure. And it came through at the right moment there for Furia. Yeah, there you go. If in doubt, bring three heart breaches because that worked out for Furia that time. It meant that they could get the multiple angles heading into the site, which is what they severely lacked in round number two because they simply didn't have any other choice. And, okay, I mean, cleaned up pretty quickly is a direct result. Patoxy caused a bit of a problem for them at the start of the round, but... Even after they lost those two players, it simply wasn't a permanent enough issue. Now, this is super intriguing to me. Fury are going to be attacking onto CCTV and Cash. It was something that Black Dragons really successfully held onto. And they had that quite extended defense all the way over to the gym and master side of the map. But this time... Furia have allowed Black Dragons to believe that they're going to be rearing at Flores. Instead, it's going to be Nook. We've seen a bit of Nook play come out over the last couple of days. This is not the first time, but it is the first time from Furia, who we didn't get to see play yesterday. So clearly they're thinking of sending Fantasy in from a, a direction that will be unexpected, I suppose. I guess we'll find out what that's going to be, whether that's in through from the jacuzzi side, whether it's up red stairs, whether it's up the garage rafters to try and catch out someone who may be playing there. But usually that nook is is brought for that specific purpose. It's again a couple of grenades as well. Furia can look to try and make use of. We do have full game sound back as well. So we can all hear nice and clearly. Now, if 
Fancy for the time being hasn't initially gone for anything too sneaky. He's just going to be watching a rotation. Making sure that nobody is able to get into lounge for free from the bar area. Miracle going to be opening the wall and we're just going to go with the good old fashioned Maverick Zephyr combination. Again, this opening engagement has been so crucial for Fury and they often find themselves losing a good couple of kills, but this time they do seem to be taking things a little bit slower. As are Black Dragons, as they're not really challenging too heavily. Previously, when we saw them play this side, they were able to get a couple of kills very early on. And it was a big swing for them. And someone that was never really dealt with was resets. And it was in part due to the fact of Fury had a lack of manpower to really effectively push Garage as well. This time, it looks as though they're going to pay some attention here. Good, I'm glad to see it. And it does mean, well, it's at least suggests to me, oh, that's a really good kill. They've got to go collect the diffuser now. And you can just watch straight onto it. What a Ooh, the back and forth, the nade met with the C4. Neither of them are going to go down just yet, but Resets has taken a hefty chunk of damage, finally brought down. The Diffuser should be able to be safely recollected now for Furia. What I was going to say is this suggests to me that they're not going to head in through Jacuzzi because they, they won't be looking for a construction push necessarily if they have this presence on Garage. But we can see Fantasy on the other side of the map looking to come in through maybe a uh, strip and take by surprise from these players from Black Dragons. Garage is finally being opened. Garage is being opened. There's still a lot of denial that can be used from very deep here by Black Dragons. They've got the smoke canisters and two C4s, and you can deploy all of that from quite deep inside of Cash. So whilst Fury have given themselves a line of sight and an option to progress through into cctv it's not going to be so straightforward for them to do so fantasy does he know that somebody is just on the other side of that door i would wager the answer is going to be yes as he does find the frag the diffuser is going to be going down as it's fantasy to try and cover and he does manage to draws for the deagle before being taken down by perez miracle not got a great deal of health to speak of and he's getting himself into an engagement hits the double peak onto perez confident gun skill there from miracle as no one was really expecting him to peak that twice plant and a couple of kills there it's gonna see furia with an advantage here at the half i really like that round i like the fact that furia went for this whole garage push let Black Dragons think that there isn't going to be anything coming in from the west side. And then, of course, send Fantasy in basically scot-free. Coming through construction. Sure, he got taken down after the first two kills. But he didn't really need to do much more than that. And he opened up everything that was needed. It's not something that you can really get away with a second time. But it doesn't matter. They're switching halves. Furia got what they wanted out of that. 4-2 at the half, and considering that they started off on attack, I would say that's pretty good here for Clubhouse. But now, they got to prove themselves on the defense. Now, Black Dragons... Um, I mean, Black Dragons, a lot of the, the big parts about their game against NIP were really notable on their attack. On their defense, they had some backwards and forwards... You know, sometimes they would send out these roamers and they would have these more extended holds. Sometimes they would hold them a lot closer together. So I don't think there's one like definite way that we can assume that uh, it would have gone. Now that they are on the attack, I think one of the things... Black Dragons did really well on attack when NIP didn't recall their roamers in time. If NIP left their roamers out too much, Black Dragons could force them into these 1v1s and win them. But if NIP were more disciplined with bringing their roamers in and Black Dragons would try to surround a site in order to enter it, that is when NIP did very well to punish them and cut down their attack before it reached the site. So I'm intrigued to see how they're going to approach this and if Furia have read into that. I mean, so far, it doesn't look like anybody is on a particularly deep roam. You've got one player over Eastway. It could be a struggle. I am going to be able to get in on the Flores now and 
destroy anything that he may find. Oh, see. As well on the repellers. This is a really directed push from the jacuzzi. There isn't much in the way of alternate approach so far. Still trying to get in to that bathroom area as well as there are all three players all stacked up. Rare has a diffuser underneath, ready to rock and roll, throwing it up through the hatch as soon as the push comes in, but going to be a little bit premature. Could have done so, waited for just a touch longer. Rare is trying to hold into that uh, sorry, CCTV and cash run out window, but there's nobody on the side of Black Dragon that's paid any attention to that directly. Sure, you've what? holding it from afar, but really, what are you able to do? Well, Patoxy, he's able to get himself into the site. Manages to find the frag over onto high. Shuts down the Alder in the bathroom, which is always a big staple here in the Fury at defense. Yeah, let's just walk into bathroom, easy peasy, and taking control. Now we've infiltrated. I mean, look, Fantasy is looking more like an attacker here as he just waits in construction to enter in through the Surya gate and he's being watched. That angle is being held. Lender traded straight out after getting a kill onto life. Puts this in a four versus three with the advantage to Black Dragons. And Patoxy knows that there are defenders surrounding him. He's just trying to hold onto these key angles that would prevent them from entering to the site. There's one from Resets. It's a constant backwards and forwards as Iron just gets going in gym. Rare has managed to make the rotation up these main stairs, but will eventually be shut down by resets. The plant as well was going down. And the approach that Black Dragons took of just single-handedly focusing on that jacuzzi side has worked out for them, which is semi-surprising because nobody on the side of Furia was willing to hold inside of CCTV and cash and the challenge on those those windows to be able to keep the players inside safe from from the threat of a rotation kill and the black dragons have gone with a, a very direct approach there and it has worked out for them but furia there were opportunities there for them to really start to counter that it is kind of funny isn't it how you talk or we talk so much about um you know the importance of having control of both sides of the map and Black Dragon's insistence on doing it just from that one direction actually worked out for them because Furia were expecting that more standard way of playing. And then how they just got such easy control of bathroom eludes me, I have to say, mm. because that was just the answer to everything. You can hold the angle straight through into construction. Fantasy had no way of making it back, back through into Master after that. He was locked out. They just walked in turn the tides on Furia and like just lock them out of the entire site. It was <laughs> so weird. And Iron was entirely free to plant in gym because there was no pressure from the defenders around there. Would have been harder to plant in master. They just didn't need to take that risk. So anyway, I don't know if something similar to that can happen here on the basement. I highly doubt it can. I guess I guess you never know. Fury is still hold on to the lead at this point. They've got a lot of C4s in pocket. So maybe see a bit more of those being played. Rare obviously tried with the C4 on the last round. Didn't succeed in anything. Lender's getting ready with the next one as Patoxy's trying to open up the server wall. Server wall should be opened pretty much for free here. Blender still going to be playing upstairs as silhouettes, red silhouettes are circling around his location. Gets a sight onto Patoxy, but he's double peak. Perez swings out of nowhere, live as well. And this opening engagement that Furia have been struggling with continues here into round number eight. Resets finds fantasy. We've not even seen a minute and 10 seconds and already it's a five versus two here. Eyes is aggressed up onto those blue stairs. Trying to hold a little bit more aggressively now as he knows that he's one of two players left alive. Miracle is doing the same. There's hatches that can be dropped. There's other ways and means in. Resets, he has the intel now. The lifeline instantly exploding tells him that there's going to be a player directly on those stairs. And he knows that he doesn't need to challenge that. Him and his team have the advantage at the moment. And it's all about how they try and work it. Miracle has seen a bit of damage 
on the main stairs. He's chunked iron down somewhat. But again, you just wonder how long this can last for. There's vertical angles that can be held above him now. As he is the last player alive, it's going to be increasingly more difficult. The whole minute for him to try and stay alive here. Picks the first onto Patoxy. Patoxy arguably out of position. It's not the hatch you want to be worrying about, buddy. Everybody is on the site. Live the players pick the final kill up. Could have been any single one of the Black Dragons players. Save Patoxy, of course, as he was already taken down. Black Dragons there steamrolling on Church and Arsenal. Yeah, man. I mean, yeah, it was kind of peculiar to me that he decided to put his attention to the hatch at the end because to me, I, I would assume that it would be more clear that someone is in kitchen if they'd actually opened up much of the floor, but that hadn't been done. They'd only opened up the hatch. There was no vertical holes that had been opened whatsoever. No pressure coming down from below. And Black Dragons just had so much freedom to walk in at the end. So, yeah, not... um. Not the best there for Furia. It wasn't quite the same as them being forced out of the site to kind of watch sadly as they looked on in, but it, I mean, it wasn't the best round. It doesn't really surprise me that they've decided to come back down to the basement actually, because that just simply wasn't the way they wanted it to go. No, you don't want to lose three kills in the opening part of the round without getting anything back whatsoever. So Fury are going to go for another attempt down here and i'm sure that they're not going to play as aggressively on that roam and if they do they maybe drop off a little bit quicker and not get themselves all taken on out because so far fury are struggling they haven't been able to pick up a defensive round here a 4-2 split that they were able to finish that first half with has disappeared as we're now all level at a fire at a 4-4 four -four. so it really is back to being anybody's and especially with the way that Black Dragons have been attacking and sort of killer instincts that they've been showing, particularly in this opening engagement, it's been working very well for them. Still, we're seeing these Mute Jammers be placed upstairs and set up, perform so that players can sit out there on the roam, but you really do start to worry. Yeah, I'm not sure how much it's doing. I'm glad that Rare kind of got out. He can probably set himself up in a, a better position elsewhere. There's three of these guys in blue. <laughs> Stacked up, ready for someone to come in through the stock window. Rez clearing out the top floor. And there's the mute jammers. And he can just shoot them easily because there's no resistance. Is there anyone even playing on that top floor now? I don't think so. I feel like Rare placed the mute jammers and then was the last person to leave. I think you may be correct. So, I mean, you know, whatever. If... Sure. <laughs> I, personally, I think it's probably a good thing. I want Furia to be playing mostly together down beneath because they got picked apart so early and gave so much space up in that last round that I think they do all really need to mostly be together. Now, a lot of this floor is being opened so they can try and hold those vertical angles as well as the Moto Hatch, as you can see. Now half the round is down, so, I mean, doing okay for time, especially as there wasn't really much of a roam too clear, because by the time that Perez got up to the top floor, no one was left from the defenders up there, so they haven't had a lot of their time wasted. I am going to be able to pick off Rare through the floor in Kitchen. There's another player underneath there that he can try and contest onto as well. Furia not in a position to make any sort of rotate now they've really just got to wait and see this push out and hopefully they will be able to hold on there's a couple of lines of sight being opened in the church wall as well as pre-fires go through live is successful takes down highs toxic babe canister going to cut him off for a couple of seconds 40 of which remain but Toxie has an alternate line though he's more inside of moto and can continue and use the blowtorch on these walls can destroy the electricity that is going to be denying the wall now it allows the wall to be open but there isn't a lot of time left really to be opening that wall instead you're going to be looking to push on in at the same time and that's exactly what patoxy is going to be doing here although live is the one credited with the kill it's still a kill that he was able to achieve and set up perez picks the final one up as the trademark push in through blue. The essential when attacking on to Church and Arsenal. Black Dragons, currently 
three to zero on their attacking side. Fury don't look comfortable on the defense, especially down in the basement there. Uh, it just seemed like they didn't quite... It's almost like the decisions that they were making for their defensive setup didn't necessarily have justification. Um, you know, there wasn't that solid idea of, we're doing this for the purpose of this, and this is how it's going to benefit our defense. And I'm not saying that when they planned the strategy, they just chose it willy-nilly. I don't believe that at all. I suspect that they obviously planned every single moment of it with purpose but it just did not turn out that way you know you look at the mute jammers upstairs they got shot out really easily by black dragons because there was no reason for them not to be furia kind of lent into a roam pulled it back early and so didn't waste any time of black dragons i feel like it was a weird halfway house between anchor and roaming that missed out on the benefits of either it was neither here nor there was it it couldn't decide what it was truly going to be and as, as we could have pointed out at the time rare with the mute jammers upstairs i don't really care where the mute jammers get used but you need them to have a little bit more impact than that it didn't if it was an attempt to slow down a top floor clear, it didn't do that. Because it was very evident and very obvious that there was nobody playing. So, Furia need to try and come away with, with something here out of this round because they're at danger of losing this and it would be a bit of a crying shame, especially with the way that they performed on their attacking phase. Somehow, struggling to make anything happen here on the defense. They're going to be looking at gym and bedroom again this time a site where Patoxy was I mean for all intents and purposes just allowed to walk into bathroom nothing in his way nothing slowing him down nothing stopping him that cannot be allowed to happen again here I hope it doesn't <laughs> I really do hope it doesn't and I actually I can't remember if it was that they because it looked soft to me I think it was left soft yeah there you go it's half Oh, no, it's not. It's fully reinforced now. I think it was half soft last time. It looked like it was half soft last time because I, it seemed like a, a soft like impact hole, whether it was done by a forest drone or a lifeline or whatever it may be. So at least it's been fully reinforced now. That was a huge problem for Furia before. How do Black Dragons reconcile this? I mean, they're making their way in. Slowly but surely they are. It's a much slower push than previously. What we saw Black Dragons try to pull it off. And again, they haven't gone for that control inside of CCTV and Cash Room. Miracle's really concerned about the hatch into logistics. And I guess rightly so. There's going to be a player on that hatch. Perez looking to maybe drop and challenge. He's not even going to need to drop. He's instead going to find the frag and then go for the drop. Now the site has really been opened up and he can push all the way through into bedroom here. Kills continue to come on in as Perez picks himself up a second. Resets joining in on the action. Lender the last alive. Furia getting torn apart on their defenses here. Black Dragons, however, they're on a match point. Yeah, like, what is going on here? It is so strange. And interestingly, it does almost link to what I was saying about their attack against NIP. You know, when NIP were very much off the site, Black Dragons, they did really well to pick them apart. It was only when NIP were playing very close together and didn't really leave any openings into a site that Black Dragons struggled against it. But Furia are leaving those openings. There are the points of ingress the Black Dragons have been able to take. And... Even if it's that they are getting into the site first and worrying about the roamers later, they are still succeeding in their endeavor of bringing them all down. There seems to be no problem, no discomfort there for Black Dragons whatsoever. So now CCTV. And uh, this is the first time that Furia have decided to defend here, which suggests to me that they've been putting it off for a reason. Which isn't good. It isn't good. It isn't good. 
considering Fury haven't won a single defensive round here. Now, I'm of the, the belief that Clubhouse has sort of changed. It's no longer this heavily defensive-sided map, but you've got to be able to win a couple of defensive rounds here. You can't be going, you know, zero on your defensive rounds one. Time really now for Fury to step up. Full points not available to them in this fixture if they do start to bring things back. But Black Dragons, on the other hand, they're on the cusp of a match point. Now, I'm not entirely sure what this will do for the standings, but what I do know, Black Dragons currently sit on 19 points. Fury currently sit on 20. So it is certainly going to mix up the standings toward that. I believe it's... I believe Team 1 are in the middle of them at the moment. Um, but at any rate, a big game for the standings. It's going to influence quite a bit. With Splat Dragon's chance here to come away with a full three and to really stamp down that authority on, let's be honest, what would be a week that goes down in the history books for them, beating NIP over on <laughs> yesterday and then continuing that today with a win over Furia. It'd be a big week. Well, let's have a look. Rez already trying to hold these windows from the south balcony. Ooh. Well, that was rude. I mean, you can go kind of see... Do they have, like, a... They don't have a full rotation into Garage. I think that's what he's trying to get the line of sight into. Pies taken down through the... Was that through the drone hole? I think potentially, yeah. All right, okay. So anyway, yeah, they don't have a full rotation into garage. They just have the line of sight that is has been held open. An iron all the way over here in master can hold through construction, which has now also been open. So these players who are in cash are a little bit trapped. Fury are the next to fall. Black dragons look unperturbed. More Flores drones coming in now as well as a push is starting to manifest itself through this construction. Black Dragons look laser focused here, but there will be a C4 from below that slows them down somewhat. Fantasy being downed in Garage isn't ideal as it leaves Lender the last alive. He was the player below with the C4. And while it landed, it didn't land onto the planter. And as such, the plant has been confirmed. Lender, he's got so much intel to go off. You can see he's got red pings. He knows exactly where at least a couple of these players are for Furia. But is he in a position to do anything about it? It's one versus four, and in a post plan, it's going to be very tricky. Already getting pre-fired onto Perez to be the person credited with that final frag. Black Dragon's there. What a strong showing on Clubhouse, particularly on that attacking phase. Managing to come back and take the game against Furia. I mean, that was just a flawless attack from Black Dragons, and... Obviously, a lot of it can be attributed to the fact that Black Dragons played exceptionally well, but also to the fact that Furia just looked lost on a lot of their defensive rounds. You know, oh, you can see how happy Black Dragons look. And that's great as well. They've had two very, very good victories to be proud of this weekend. But 